grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. And defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples of the, on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. This reading is from the last of four passages in Isaiah that are often called the servant songs. Christians are probably most familiar with this servant song. In light of Christian faith, the servant's healing ministry and redemptive suffering are understood to be fulfilled in the life and death of Christ. The first reading is from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. 
Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our inequities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So who did not open his mouth? By a per perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, Stricken for the transgression of my people, they made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him will the Lord, will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish shall, he shall see light he shall find satisfaction through all his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will not allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured himself out to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give you the angels to charge over you, to guard you in all your ways. Upon your hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper, you will trample down the lion and the serpent. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Using imagery from scripture and from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented as a great high priest who is obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Hebrews. Every high priest chosen among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, you are my priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who is able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And he said to, they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When Jesus, when, when the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know the three laws of real estate, right? Location, location, location. Yeah, that's important. You have to buy the real estate that's in a good location that's not only going to bring the most value, but also the most enjoyment, and it will be um, better to, to resell it whenever the time comes to move. Uh, but that's not just true about real, uh, real estate. It's also true about relationships. And we like to be next or close to people who have power and influence. And uh, that uh, was uh, demonstrated in the gospel lesson today when the sons of Zebedee, James and John, came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. And Jesus knew that something was up with that request, and so he said, what is it you want? He said, let one of us sit on your right hand and one of us on your left. And Jesus said to them, you don't know what you're asking. But they wanted to be in a position of power next to someone who is the most influential person in the new kingdom. What did James and John have in mind? I'm sure they probably thought about a huge banquet hall. You know, uh, when, whenever people are seated together. And I see sometimes this happening, uh, people uh, worried about, you know, who sits where whenever there's a, like a wedding reception. Uh, but oftentimes that's uh, so that everybody gets along, you know. We don't want Uncle Joe sitting with uh, Cousin Sally because the politics, you know, they, they don't mix or they don't match politically. Or, or, you know, there's some bad history with this person and, and against that person, so we want them to you know, sit on separate, at separate tables, probably across the room from each other. But, uh, and then the most important guests always have the best seats, right? And then next closest, and then on on further you go back and so we are we're pretty familiar with that you know people want to get to next to people who have power and also people who have influence um, I was listening to John Dickerson talk about his book about the presidents he, he, he went through and listed all the characteristics of different presidents and one of the biggest issues was who had access to the president. Because if you do, that is, of course, uh, gives you a lot of power and influence. And so it's even an issue today. But the deal is, when it comes to Jesus, everyone has access to him. He's available for everyone. And this is important for us to keep in mind. Martin Luther, whenever he reformed the church, one of the things that he, he did away with was the prayers to the saints. You know, in the, the medieval church, there was a heavenly bureaucracy. And uh, uh, all these saints were up in heaven. And if you wanted something, you had to pray to the right saint. For example, if you lost something, you prayed to someone you know, who was going to help you find it. You know, if you were traveling, you pray to another saint who was going to protect you during your travel. And if there was, there was difficult in your relationships, you pray to this saint or, you know, the saint of lost causes. You know, there was a saint for that too. And you prayed to all these different saints. And if you prayed to the right saints, you increased your chance of getting what you wanted. And Luther corrected this whenever he said, that's not the way it goes. Everyone has access to God through Jesus Christ. And he pointed in passages of scripture, like the one I'm going to about to read, second, or 1 Timothy, the second chapter. It says, for there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind. Jesus Christ himself, who gave himself a ransom for all. There's but one mediator between humanity and God, that being Jesus. And everyone has access to him. You know, oftentimes, 
people will come up to me and say, Pastor, we want you to pray because we think, you know, you have a direct line. Well, that's right, I do have a direct line, but so do you. And God hears your prayers as quickly as he hears my prayers. You know, sometimes people will say, you know, and some of the, some of the requests that I get are serious, and I take those to heart. Some of them are kind of trivial, like, uh, Pastor, I got a tea time tomorrow, so uh, pray that the rain holds off, you know? And uh, to those, I always say, well, you have to remember, you know, I'm, I'm just in sales, I'm not in management. You know, and, and, but God hears your prayers as, as quickly as he hears mine. There's some throwbacks that we have to this, you know, that, uh, uh, that even in our liturgy today, you know, uh, liturgically speaking, there, there are stances that, that the pastor takes. You know, when I face the congregation, that's a pastoral function. When I face the east wall over here, that's called the east wall even though it points south, okay, um, that is called a priestly function. And many of you can remember years ago that altar used to be up against that wall. And that was because they were lifting up the priestly function of the clergy. But like so many churches, we moved it out from there because we want to emphasize the pastoral thing. The priest is the one who intercedes for the people. And we just read here, it says there is but one intercessor, mediator, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So, everyone has equal availability. And this is a blessing. This is a blessing that we are to carry with our lives, not just for our benefit, but also to shed light, the love of God, into the lives of other people as well. James wanted that banquet, Paul. When Jesus comes into your glory, that's what we want. We want to be right there with you, one on your right, one on your left. The glory, though, was whenever he was lifted up on the cross. And neither James nor John was on his left or his right, but two bandits being crucified for their crimes. What does that tell us but a powerful message? That in the midst of life, even the harshest point of life, God is there. The ancients used to say, vocatus, non vocatus, deus ardirit, called or not called, God is present. And that says, in the worst of life, even then, God is there. Not in some heavenly banquet alone. Although we have that promise, that God is with us even in the worst of life. And it is our uh, task to remember his presence so that the light that he shines into our hearts might be spread into the hearts of others. That we might be willing servants of the kingdom as we prayed in that prayer the beginning of the service. You turn your goodness, your, you turn your greatness into goodness. God turns his greatness into goodness. And may our greatness also be turned into goodness to benefit the darkness of this world. Amen.
set free from sin and death, and nourished by the word of truth. We join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the, of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy Creating one, for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O oh God. Suffering one, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness. And create places of refuge for all, dis all people. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness. Especially we lift up Anne Marie, Mary Rose, Jack, Marion, Jean, uh, Jeannie. Sandy, Janet, Elvira, Lou, Rick, Jennifer, Jean, Donald, Charlotte, Jeff, Bob, and those we name before you in our hearts at this time. We pray that they may all be healed. Hear us, O oh God. Sustaining one for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, and nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, especially Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered in your eternal feast. Hear us, O oh God. Confident that you hear us, O oh God. We boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their ending hymn. Oh. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. 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 Gathered in one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. And it's the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, I'm sorry. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.